What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a new episode here of Radio Wigwam, Palangi's Studio of Rock. Only every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. UK Time. Today, we got Mike McKee and Catherine Lee, which your last names do rhyme, by the way. I just figured that out. <laughs> With that. the drum team collective rock and roll extraordinaires here. We're going to have a little chat. That's a little different. We usually have musicians and stuff, but... I'm a recording guy, and I love to support the music community, and um, I wanted something a little different and see if I can get you guys out there a little bit, because Catherine talks you up all the time, but we've never had a formal conversation. So here he we go. What's going on? Musician. Say that again? He is an amazing musician in its own with his band. Like he's, They're incredible, so don't let but him fool you. Michael? Michael Myers over here? That's no. me. <laughs> So how did you come up with this idea for this this company here? So Drum Team Collective is a team building company. We teach people how to play drums and join a rock and roll band in a short, you know, 90 minute program. I came up with the idea. Uh, so my full time job, I'm, on, I'm the drummer for the band Delta Ray. We've been around for about 12 years, done a lot of cool stuff. We were taking a little break from tour and yeah. I was driving to my younger brother's bachelor party in North Carolina. And I got a call from somebody said, Hey, I saw your Craigslist ad for drum lessons. And she's like, I'm an event planner and I need like a drum circle for a company for a team building thing, but I don't want to do a drum circle. You seem like an interesting guy. What can you do? And I'm like, well, I don't really do that stuff at all. I've never done a drum circle. I do private lessons and gigs, but it's like, well, Let's see what happens. So I just had four hours to drive and I was like, okay, not a drum circle. What if we do a hand drum? What if we take parts of the drum set and explode it into a semicircle? And instead of teaching like patterns all together, we teach parts of the drum set. Cause that's how I teach drum kits of the students. Okay. I put it together, play drum group. Right. Yep. And I, I, and then I called her, I pitched that to her and she was like, brilliant, let's do it. And I was like, well, I hope it works. <laughs> so <laughs> weeks after that, I had some friends over, some family over. Um, and I was like, Hey guys, let's throw some drums up here. And we kind of like did a demo of like, Hey, can this work with people that don't know how to play drums? Can you play a drum group together yep. in five minutes? And I, it worked. So I borrowed a bunch of drums and drove to the Outer Banks and did this event. It was for Underwriters Laboratory was our first client. Wow. And it was, it was, I mean, it, it worked. It was fun. Yeah. And then the lady, I thought it was gonna be a one-off gig, one-off event. And yeah. the host said, this was so much fun. If you were to package this up, tighten it up a little bit, you could sell this as a, as a, as a program. And that was back in 2018. So I've been doing it ever since. Wow. So you started off just with drum lessons. I kind of, because I teach guitar lessons too. And it's like, somebody asks you something out of an ordinary, you're like, I, can I can I do this? Like, what is this? Right. That's awesome that you fell into that idea. Because, and... So yeah, I noticed if you go on your Facebook and stuff, um, you have kicks set up, you have snares set up, you have percussion. So it's all like broken down. Because when I think of that, I think of, I was like, well, isn't there supposed to be like, um, I don't know, 18 regular drum sets, let's say, mm -hmm. you know? So what's, what's your approach with that, with learning? Is it kind of like an orchestra where you have like this side do the kicks and then the snares or I'm not going to get into it too much. It's a, it is kind of proprietary stuff. Our teaching methodology is copywritten and everything. So, oh, okay. but I will tell you this, that our program is for people that have never played drums before, never played music before, but always wanted to be in a band or all going to play music. So yeah, yep. it's a no experience. That's the way we like it. And we have a, a very particular way of teaching people how to uh, play rhythms and patterns. And we have a, and we have a, a rock and roll band behind them playing rock and roll songs. That's awesome. And yeah. Catherine is one of those singers in there. What's yeah. up, Catherine? It is a blast. It is so fun. I mean, these people, they come in and they have no idea what to expect. They're thinking like, you know, okay, so it's another team building event for the company. And then it's a totally different experience than what they were expecting. And they always leave with such a big smile on their face. So it's really, really fun and rewarding for us, for sure. What are some of the songs you guys do? Like you, you do originals or is it mostly cover kind of stuff? All covers, all covers. All covers. And we have so many different band members that kind of rotate in and out just depending on the schedule. Yep. And we just, we play medleys of songs. It can be some classic rock songs, some modern songs. I love rock and roll all the way to Wonderwall, all the way to Friends and <laughs> You know, and a lot of these songs are so simple. They're at the, the, the core. They're very, very simple when you, yeah. you kind of strip it down. 
uh, and everybody just has a blast playing along with these songs. I know when you go on your uh, your Facebook and stuff too. There's there's wigs. There's people doing percussion lines. They're wow. they're running. I've seen some people like running. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The spirit moves them. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that's Catherine though because. Catherine's really good at hyping people up. So she'll be up there singing, but also is out dancing around and getting people a little bit out of their comfort zone. So one of the purposes that we do is getting people to be vulnerable, you know, and, and that allows people to communicate better. And yeah. we can spread joy through rock and roll. And the vehicle through all that is music. Yeah. We want them to have that experience where like they're they're not, you know, employees on that day. They are literally part of a rock band. So okay. we do everything on our end to make them feel like they are literally part of our group. So in that moment, it's like they belong there and they're part of it and they get to there's a lot of interaction. And so, you know, there's a there's a few little makeovers that we do to kind of get them in the mood. You mentioned <laughs> the, the wigs and costumes and it's just it's really, really fun. They won't That's they cool. don't get that experience anywhere else. So it's fine. And to go back to your other question about how it kind of started. So before I had the concept of drum team, I had a show I was playing with, with Del Ray. We were like maybe three months into a tour. Um, and Tell us who your band is really quick, just for people that have no idea. Del Ray, we're based out of uh, Durham, North Carolina, and we're kind of spread out now, but we were signed to Warner Brothers for several years, and then we went to Big Machine Records. Yeah. Nothing Machine and launched a Kickstarter campaign in 2019 and raised half a million dollars on Kickstarter. We were the highest grossing band on Kickstarter uh, ever. Wow. Uh, then 2020 that happened, and that's you know a whole other conversation. But mm -hmm. that's, my, that's my background there. So I was playing a show with the band, and I was backstage. I was not in the mood. I was like, man, I just I really don't want to play a show right now. Uh, I just didn't want to. And then it was showtime. Walk, I walk through the curtains and there's haze on the stage and the crowd, ah, the big crowd. And I sit behind the drum kit and I stomp on the kick drum. Boom, and then I got this subwoofer behind me and I go, you know what? This is fun. Everybody should have this feeling of like this. Of, of, of yeah. Fun. You know, instantly I went from like, nah, I don't want to do this to, yeah, let's do this. Okay. That's kind of where it's spot. Yeah. Cause it's, if you have an audience in front of you, wouldn't that be cool to, like hand out shakers to every single one of them and say, you know, in the, in the middle of your set, be like, this is what everyone's going to do or beforehand. Right. Yeah. It's cause it's, it's, um, it's different than lessons, you know, like I did, I didn't really know a hundred percent of everything, what you guys did. And I was like, well, it's, I think they, they, they teach lessons, but it's more about being together and having fun and, and what they can do. And all that other good stuff. Absolutely. It's all about communication, vulnerability, and getting out of your comfort zone and coming together. And of course, after the pandemic, so many people haven't seen each other. So there's so many teams that used to be together, now aren't, or at the, during the pandemic weren't. Yes. And then, and then they, their remoteness stayed. So there, there's a disconnect or they'll come together once a month or something like that. Yep. And so what better vehicle for communication than music? Yes. You get everybody, and it's mostly so businesses out there. Like, say I was a business, they'd contact you guys and be like, "We want you to host a, it's a, let's say an event, you know, yeah. that sort of thing." Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they go to our website, drumteamcollective.com, and there's a form you can fill out, like, "Hey, what's your availability?" That kind of stuff, and we'll 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 make it work. Yeah, and you do stages and conference halls and and a bunch of other places, outdoor stuff too. We've done some outdoors, uh, like at street festivals, things like that. Okay. Uh, most of the time we're in concert venues during the day or the morning. Yeah, it's perfect. So, you know, these bars and these venues don't get busy till five o'clock. So we'll come in and do a morning session with a group and then we pack up or had a good time to go off to do their other breakout sessions. And then the band comes in, the real band comes in that night to, to do their concert. Yeah. Yeah. Or even before one of your guys' show, you know what I mean? Sure. You're hanging around, you got time. Yeah. It's Catherine there. Let's go back to Catherine here. So what's your background? I know you're a singer. You sing and you write, you write some music here. How did you, how did you stumble across this company? And, uh, so Mike and I actually go way back. Um, I met him in college. Um, and he did music. I did music. Um, I didn't, we didn't have any classes together or anything, but, um, I, on the side, I started doing, like guest vocals, I would sit in with um, this band called The Breakfast Club. They were an 80s cover band. And 
um, at the time I was running lights at uh, a local venue here, which oddly enough is where we're doing a lot of our events now <laughs> with drum team. But, but I was doing lighting there at the time. And so this band um, asked me to start coming in and singing the girly songs like the Pat Benatar and mm. um, you know, the Blondie and all that stuff. So, um, so I started, uh, you know, doing songs with them here and there. And Mike would come out, um, just, you know, have fun, you know, something fun to do on a Saturday night. And he would come to the show and he always really supported me, even though I was up there just doing like one or two songs, like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, oh, this is nothing. But he's like, yeah, like, really <laughs> supporting me. So I don't know. I think that always kind of stuck with me. And then when he was doing his own company, like, you know, and I saw he was looking for somebody to to do hype work and everything and then eventually singing um that was something that i wanted to show the same support you know and and so that's that's how that started what made you want to become a singer because there's so many things that you could do just the, the love for singing or is it certain artists that you've seen it's for i know me, you've done some guest spots with uh -huh. with another band you can mention them too yeah you. so um that was another thing i just kind of stumbled on uh that was uh so Trevor, or Trey, Trey Stafford from um, from Adelita's Way, he started asking me to um, to do some guest vocals with his side band. Uh, his wife had told him about about me and that I do vocals, and um, he seemed to think that my voice was a good fit. So that's when we started doing uh, some of those songs. But really, for me, I just I just always loved singing. Uh, it just always made me feel really good. I wasn't always so excuse me, the pun but I wasn't always so vocal about it um I used yeah. to be like really you know more shy and it was harder for me to get on stage but um but ever since the pandemic that was kind of my goal was like I don't want to be shy with this anymore I, because it just makes me happy it makes me feel really good I like I just like the feeling of singing so yeah that's my, yeah. That was my and you have a great goal. voice too by the way Thank you. Well, you do too. <laughs> Thanks. I'm a little more grittier than yours, but <laughs> well, one day, one day I still think that we're gonna we're gonna eventually collaborate. So that's someday. Everyone yeah. out there tuning in, Palangi Studio of Rock, only here on Radio Wigwam. I found Catherine through a vocal coach who we've had on the show, Melissa Harding, with uh, uh, James Michael from Six AM. We had them on a couple weeks ago, and um, through this. You know, little revolving circle. We've we've had a lot of branches. I'm glad to be able to connect with everybody. But who, you know, it's like who knows when you meet one person that you could be friends with. You know, it just keeps going. It's the yeah. the I circle mean, like, of music. And and talk about Melissa and and her voice. You know, her, the little voice classes that she's got going. I mean, I think that was that was a really big impact on me on, on how I was able to to gather the the yeah. um I don't know is it maybe the confidence to to do this um but yeah I mean just having having that that little group that we've got because we discuss you know mindset vocal mindset and when you're performing and um those discussions really, really helped me to be able to break through my own mental barriers and and to and to actually do this. So yeah. I've, I've got to give you know recognition where it's due. So, There's yeah. a lot lot to think about out there. A lot of people are like, oh, anyone can just go up and sing on stage. It's not that simple. I remember stepping on like a stage in high school, and I'm feeling like guitar wise, I could play in front of any amount of people. But then when I went to sing, it was kind of, it was a different feeling. Like I'm going to screw up. <laughs> I know I am. And that's part of the thinking that you were saying is that you don't want, you don't want to say that I know I am going to screw up. No, this is going to be fun. Or I know I can do it. Right. Because I mean, you can take voice lessons all day and you can work on your voice all day, but if you don't have the proper mindset, it's going to still be a challenge to get yes. on stage and actually do it in front of people. If you, you know, or somebody that struggles with anxiety like I do, um, you kind of need a little bit of different training, a different approach to actually, you know, hitting the stage. Yeah, that would probably be the number one advice probably that we'd give anybody, I would say, too, for vocally wise and practice. So you got to practice, 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 practice. All my students are like, ah, well, 
yeah, I I played a little bit this week, and I go, well, whatever you want. What's your goal? Speaking which, back to Michael here. What's what's your what's your goal with your company? Like, where do you see it going? What do you want to do in the future? Is there is there other things you want to kind of sprout out with? Well, um, we've just recently started bringing in electric guitar into the program, having yeah. people play electric guitar through a very specific uh, tool. And so kind of that's a new idea that we're branching out with and also just new locations. So I live in Nashville and we are branching out a drum team here. Uh, I have a closet full of drums over there. And so we're going to be hosting events here. And I have different facilitators and musicians. So I teach the program to different people okay. and, and they do it. So in Raleigh, I got like four, four different people that host the events um and okay. what's, really cool, what's really cool though is they're they're all drummers because they're experienced behind the kit and teaching drums yeah. but as drummers we have a protection in front of us We're, we've always had a drum set and that's our voice right yeah we'll you be- never quite get to step on the front of that stage so, so with the drum team event you have a microphone and then you are in front of your drum set talking to people and that is difficult and so all of my facilitators have expressed to me like man I was so nervous. I was so anxious and vulnerable. But by the end of it, I felt empowered. And that empowerment goes through the facilitator and it and it trickles down to all the people because they're seeing someone who's not used to talking. Yes. You know? yeah. I used to have a horrible speech impediment. I couldn't talk for years and years and years. And and then public speaking was was out. So drums were great for me because it was a shield. But I started yeah. thing and I was beyond nervous starting it, beyond nervous. But now I feel like I have no more shell. Yeah. So, so we try to empower everybody, including the teammates that we have for the company. That's a great idea. And you, a lot of people, you never get to hear the drummer, what they have to say. And for drummers to do that, it's, it's their, you know, the lead moment to, to go and experience that and to teach. And, and Exactly. And we have a, we have a fun part of the program, the music industry Q and a, everybody that does the events are all professional musicians. And it's a time to sit down, break the fourth wall and say, hey, guys, what questions do you have about the music industry? What's it like playing on late night TV shows? What's it like going on tour? You know, that yeah. kind of stuff. And yeah, you can network a little bit and those, exchange stories. Yeah, talk to tell stories and just like let people know what it's like in this in this recording studio. Most people don't know what it's really like. Yeah, yeah. Give them any insights that, that they might want or can't. Do they take a lot of questions during it? Like a lot of people ask a lot of questions. It depends. Some some events, the one yesterday or two days ago, was very few questions. Oh, but okay. some, I had to cut them off. I have I've had some that they're asking, like, "How does revenue with Spotify work?" <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> or like, you know, we're, one of them was like, "What's the Taylor Swift story with with Big Machine?" And I'm like, "Wow, I can <laughs> I, I can talk a lot about that." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. Funny well. Cool. The most important thing, like you said, is getting people back together. And so if it's something that you guys out there, you know, we broadcast from all over the place. They have three different locations. You can go to their website. Give me the website one more time. Uh, Drumteamcollective.com or Instagram or Yelp or uh, LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter. all All the things, all the things. Okay. TikTok. You guys on TikTok? Man, I no, I okay. love TikTok. It's a lot of fun, but um, <laughs> drum team needs. I, I run uh, another company that has a TikTok, so um, that's my. I do that one. How do you how do you think social media, uh, especially like, I know you're not on TikTok, but say the like the rise of TikTok. How does that help or affect your business? For drum team, yeah, just as far as obviously exposure, but is there any? Um, you know, you have to see what the demographic is for your clientele and what the demographic is for the user of the interface. So for example, I would much rather put energy and burn calories towards Facebook and LinkedIn to get Uh clients. If I was selling widgets that appealed to 15 year olds, I would not put any dollars to LinkedIn. I'll put it all to TikTok. So it depends on what your demographic is for drum team collective. Our demographic are HR or people that are booking, yep. you know, like, you want those businesses on LinkedIn. You want yeah, those yeah. professional. Don't... Exactly. Yep. Catherine, are you there? <laughs> no, <I left. laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you think about all this new technology with like TikTok and all that? How does it affect 
you know, a company like Mike's or, or a singer like yourself? You think it's good because you can get yourself out there or is there too, too much out there in the radio waves? There's just too many, too much. How can you be found anymore? For me personally, I, I am not really, um, technology inclined. <laughs> I feel like you have to be nowadays. It's like you're forced to. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, that's the way. And you, I, 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 think I just posted like, I don't know, just probably less than five videos ever on, on TikTok so far. So I'm still like that's a okay. TikTok newbie. Guest star somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see where that goes. I don't know yet. So what's what's your overall goal? Do you think where where do you picture yourself in like five years as far as original music, doing this, maybe a but, uh, so I say a band, a band. I'd we talked about to, that a little bit. Yeah, I'd love to have, you know, my own band. I mean, not like focused on me, but like I'd love to have a band that I'm a part of. Yeah, um, I I'd love that in the future at some point. Obviously, I do have original songs written. You and I have talked about that. Maybe, you know, recording something. Um, but yeah, as far as like what I see in the future, I'm really open to anything. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I don't want to set limitations on myself. I just want to just see where it goes because there's so many different possibilities. And, you know, I never thought that I would be doing the, the drum team stuff. I'm not a drummer, you know, so it's not something that I mm. thought that I would be, uh, I didn't think that that was a possibility, uh, for a vocalist to go and do something like that. So, um, you know, I'm not going to set any limitations, but I would love to to release original music and to have my own band. And yeah, so if anybody's watching, <laughs> we'll get Michael to drum for your recording. There we go. We know one drummer know. Michael, and a guitarist. Mike is a busy guy. He is <laughs> yeah. a busy, busy guy. I don't know how. We'll send him one it. track. <laughs> he, he has so much stuff going on. I mean, he hasn't even mentioned he's got another company as well. He has Bald Man Percussion as well. So he's got like so much stuff going on but yeah okay. for the record i would i would be more than happy to, to work <laughs> with mike um, really on any project but yeah if he wanted if we wanted to do something musical as well i would be more than happy to what's it's different about that second company there michael oh man those that's completely sovereign entities so the the table of my career is set up with multiple legs four legs delta ray yep. drum team collective rock and roll team building bald man percussion and then just doing gigs around town, playing with friends, doing cover gigs, wedding gigs, stuff like that, that just for, for fun and a little bit yeah. of money. Yeah. Those are the legs to my career. And Bald Man Percussion started around the same time as Drum Team did. Me and my buddy Danny, he's another bald drummer. We met on the road. I had this device that I had made, chains and wood and metal as a hi-hat symbol. And he saw it and was like, hey, this is cool. Can I make it a little bit better? I'm a woodworker, you know, I make it a little cleaner. He did that. And we were just kind of kicking around some different ideas. And then he did, uh, he was on Stephen Colbert's show and using that, his de the device that we can kind of rigged up. Wow. And Taylor, the house drummer was like, that thing's cool. What is it? And Danny told me that. I was like, man, okay, I like it. You like it. Joe Saylor likes it. Let's make some and see what happens. Yeah. So fast forward a little bit. Um, we call it the Junk Cat with a patent on it. And it is a reverse gate of snare drum 808 analog machine. It won Best in Show at NAMM in 2019. And then we have other products that won. We have another product called the Stank Foot. It won Best in Show at NAMM last year. And we're in 25 different countries. Daru Jones has signature series with us. Aaron Sterling plays it. Wow. Uh, yeah, Travis Barker is playing our stuff. Like it's so it's pretty, it's fun. We, we make instruments and there are analog versions of uh, digital sounds. The best way to describe it. Okay. It's kind of a big deal. <laughs> That's a, I'd be interested in looking at it. What's the website for that? Baldmanpercussion.com and Baldman Percussion Instagram. Uh, we're pretty easy to find there. Now you asked about TikTok and stuff. So that yeah. demographic, okay. So that demographic and that product focuses around sound, studio work, uh, famous drummers, you know, yep. that kind of stuff. You want to burn a lot of calories in Instagram and TikTok because you get facial yeah. recognition. So getting those artists to to do uh, videos and stuff with that product. Bingo. Yep. And, yep. and would I would I do a bald man LinkedIn? No, because no no CEO is trying to get bald man to do a thing. So yeah, that's why I say, when I do drum team work, 
I put on a hat and I do a certain thing. And that's where I focus that my verbiage and the blogs I do and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Is for that. I think that how I'll put another one on and then is bald man work. And that goes for four drummers, four producers, four engineers and speak that language and use that verbiage. And then I take that hat off, put on Delta Ray and, <laughs> um, you know, that's and and just rock that. out. <laughs> right. That's cool. That's and, and you need to nowadays, I feel like uh, just doing one thing is kind of it's it's so weird, but it's not good enough nowadays. It's like I don't know if it's like technology is making us, you know, there's all these different avenues where we need to do this. We need to do that. We need to do that. But it all collectively comes together and you make a living off of it because I don't like I played for a living for eight years and I realized I can't just play for a living as a musician and make a living. So what else can I do? What, you know, it's a one piece of the pie. You know what I mean? It's a shame. The cost of living has skyrocketed and the and wages have not kept up. So this, yeah. if, you to, if you go to a bar gig uh, somewhere, you know, there's a good chance that the wage is the same as it was 30 years ago. It like is. 150 bucks, right? That's yes. the right today. It's insane. Yep. And everybody else goes up. That's what I always argue. And I'm like, and you always try to to get more and stuff. And then a lot of the owners and stuff just doesn't, they don't get it or I don't know. They don't have the budget. That's probably the number one thing. We don't have the budget. I'm like, well then don't have music. You know, if you really want music, yeah, it's I a mean, given, it's a give and take. And, and there's this mentality of like, Oh, you're playing music. You should be grateful. You're just having fun. Right. And that's the non-music talk of not, not music. Oh, like, yes. well, you're just having a good time. Like, and you're like, well, yeah, I am having a good time. All right. Then do it for 50 bucks. And you're like, well, Ah, you know, it's, yeah. Why don't you? Some people view it as why don't you just come over and play? Like, mm -hmm. why don't you just come over and play at my restaurant? And we view it differently. Like, we're coming over, doing a gig, and it's not like going over to Buddy's house and playing a little party or something. It's it's different. And well, um, the word the word our work is play. You know, the, is the word play. So there's this kind of um, there's some mental roadblocks there. It's called yeah. play. It, it is absolutely work. And the best musicians I know are the ones who'll say like. We play for free. It's the travel you got to pay me for. Traveling, is that's work. <laughs> Setting up and traveling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll do that for free. But then you got to pay me my full scale to show up. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And um, we're paying you to play, so um, you know, we don't allow tip jars here. I've I've had that a couple times, and I'm like, I've never heard that in my whole life. They're like, well, we're paying you to play, so that should be good enough. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> well, then, then, the, then the servers don't get tips either. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love the thing. I, yeah. I don't know if it's near you guys where there's an option on a, a receipt that says tip the musician as well. I love oh, yeah. that idea. That's love that cool. idea. Because you can't, I mean, physically, say you got 30 tables and only 20 people, whatever, walk by you as they leave, they will, every one of those will see that on that ticket. And and nowadays, a lot of our musicians will have their banner set up and it says, "Here's my Venmo," and that way, there's no cash. The restaurant can't do anything about it. You got a Venmo. That's true. Done deal. Make it easy. Yeah. Yep. I always put out the old the old tin can. Okay. Well, you're old. <laughs> old school. Yeah. I've put out uh, cookie jars, uh, everything, everything. We've used a guitar case. We've used everything last minute. <laughs> yeah. But um. Anyways, you guys, I think we can hit the mark here. I appreciate you guys uh, coming on here, the show, talking a little bit here. This is it's a different interview for me. I usually interview musicians. I know you're a musician, but I like talking more about the the gear and the music community and to try to expose you guys because I think it's I think it's a really cool idea. I was telling her, I go, there's not one near me, so I, I can't help you guys out at all. <laughs> And I was like, you should move to North Carolina. You'd be perfect. I know. And I'm like, ah, I'd move there and go broke instantly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you ever do come near, even like Massachusetts area, anywhere, anywhere up oh, north wise, yeah. I will yeah, be, well, we're, be we in have, touch. We have plans to scale it up pretty big time. So um, we might just see you up there. All right. Before we go, anything, any one last word of advice you want to give? let's say artists out there having a hard time getting to the next level. You, you as an artist and a drummer, what, what's your advice? Best piece of advice I've ever heard is some people will love you for the exact same reason. Other people will hate you. If you put out your art, there's going to be people that go, this is great because of this. And then another group will say, this is awful because of same thing. 
Yeah. Yep. Do your thing. You will, if you're doing art, you will attract an audience. If there's something you like, other people are going to like it too. And other people will hate, hate it for the same reason. So don't be discouraged when people hate it. Because other people will love it. Very true. Catherine. What yes. you got? What you got on your mind? You got, you know, I know you it, got something. It reminds me like when he puts it that way. So something that I would say is, you know, when you ask anybody their favorite color, everybody's going to have a different color that they love, but that doesn't mean the other colors are no good. So if, if you aren't somebody's preference, that's fine. You know, let it go. You're, you're going to find, you know, there's going to be somebody that, that likes what you do and that appreciates what you do. So don't give up on yourself and don't think that you're no good just because, you know, one person or a group of people, it's not their thing. It's totally fine. Just keep believing in yourself. And if something's not working, start thinking outside the box and, and try something else. So just stick with it. That's I've never heard of that. That's awesome. A color. Mm -hmm. that's great because it's like uh, we all appreciate every single color i mean i don't use pink a lot but i appreciate it still you know what i mean <laughs> or i don't know what's a bad color chocolate chocolate brown <laughs> <laughs> i don't know they all have their, they all have their place no, exactly that's a great, a great analogy Catherine. i like that a lot yeah yep I like it. Well, thanks, guys. Make sure you guys check them out here. You can hear reruns. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, because we've been uh, kicking some butt here on Mixcloud, and I appreciate it here with the, I don't know, whoever's listening out there. We broadcast from all over the place, whether in the U.K. and Canada and Mexico, and I've had a few people contact me from Australia, which, good day, mate. I don't know. That's probably really bad. <laughs> But thanks, guys, everybody, for tuning in here. You can uh, head over to our YouTubes and our social medias and see this about a week later after this airs. But until then, I will see you guys next week for the Halloween Radio Wigwam Palangi Studio of Rock episode. So uh, bring your Michael Myers masks and your Jason Voorhees stuff. All right, we'll rock out. <laughs> see you guys. Thanks very much. I appreciate thanks, it. Frank. Thank you.